So this is a video where I'm going to skip the introduction. Uh, many of you know that we went to Fotokina and just got back, but we also went to Poland. Uh, I chose to go to Poland before Fotokina basically to follow the Jewish, Jewish heritage steps. Um, I wanted to go to Warsaw and go through the Warsaw ghettos and see what you know, the history behind it and, and have a tour guide, which we did have a tour guide for, as well as we went to Auschwitz uh, and Birkenau, which is Auschwitz as well, to experience uh, a, a death camp, you know, a, a concentration camp, to be there, to actually, you know, it's not a happy place. You don't go on, it's not a vacation. It's one of those things that, I guess, being Jewish or, I mean, being a human being, you, you have to experience the bad uh, along with the good. And Nothing can kind of be worse than than the Holocaust uh, and what happened there in Birkenau in Auschwitz uh, and obviously throughout the world and and all, it wasn't just Jews it was gypsies and Christians and and visionaries and educators and you know a lot of people were murdered uh, there so I chose to do this and chose to have a tour guide so that we could ask as many questions as we had but I also took my camera in this case I took the Nikon D810. That it was honestly the first time I ever used it was when I took it to uh, Poland, and I didn't know if I would take any photos. I didn't know what we would find. I didn't know what we would encounter, and I only took a handful of pictures when I was there because there wasn't a lot to shoot, and also you don't know the emotional feelings that you'll get when you're there, but I still think it's very important to capture images. So I have three images. That's it. Three shots from Auschwitz that I want to share um, they are basically a photo story of, of what I felt, and I was there and didn't feel emotionally, you know, grabbed terribly too much, and I'm going to, uh, I mean, yes, it was very emotional, I'm going to talk more about that on the next Raw Talk, but these images, when I got them home, really struck a chord, so... I'm going to show you them. It's not so much about the technical aspect. You can see the technical aspect, but it's about the image. Just, I'll just tell you, 64 ISO because this camera let me do it. Um, here's the one shot. Now, anybody that has ever seen anything related to the Holocaust will know that this is one of those shots, uh, the gates of Birkenau, that so many people came through but never went out. Over a million Jews and, and Christians and others were, were murdered there. They don't have an exact number because they, though they kept pretty good records, nobody really knows. Um, this, I stood on the tracks, and these are the original tracks that so many people were brought on in cattle cars from all across Europe to basically die, uh, to be murdered. So... I'll break down the image why I shot it this way. 70 to 200, 2.8, shot at 2.8, 64 ISO, focused in on the train track close because, one, there's people in the background, and I wanted them to be out of focus because this is a very uh, – I didn't want people in the background. The gates, I wanted out of focus. But, I, but anybody knows that has ever seen this knows what that is. They know what this is. So that is why – I, did, I shot it this way. I didn't want it all in focus. I wanted it to be out of focus. I want you to think. And the image makes you think about what happened, what came through the gates in the distance. Um, and this is just one of the three images. Also, black and white plays a part. It should be in black and white, in my opinion. So this is a very emotional type image because of what it represents. Uh, and then we'll move on to the next one, which is a train car. Now, I didn't shoot it wider. I mean, I have a, a, other ones that are wider, but I felt that this one was more of a story. You've got the footrests that people would climb up or climb down getting off the train or getting on the train. You still have in the distance the gates in the background. Um, you know, because the, there, there were separate tracks over on the side here where the one train sat, and so I got the gates in there. You can also see in here there's a cobweb. Again, this is 64 ISO. And I just felt, you know, when you see the third image, it all comes into context as the photo story. Uh, I thought that this was important to see. You got the wheels of the train, you have the, the train tracks, and you have the steps. And I just thought that this grabbed it. You also don't have people in it again. And then the last image, which 
didn't strike me until I sat here to edit it, and I want you all to take a deep look at it as I talk about it. This is the camp. The barbed wire is still there. Now, they said that the barbed wire has been replaced over the years because it's deteriorated, but they keep it the same. Um, you've got the tracks close to me. You've got the tracks in the... In the this is an original, quote-unquote, cattle car. Anybody that doesn't know much about the Holocaust or, or whatnot is they packed hundreds of people inside these cars, locked it, didn't have water, no heat, no air. I mean, n no protection from the elements, no bathrooms. Sometimes you went for you 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 were you were cattle you you were carted on the train for for days, some weeks, some trips even took months to get there from far away as Greece, and it's not like they really gave you a lot of food. I mean, people died here. It must have been some of the most grueling, painful situations ever to be in. Now, when I look at this image, when I sat here on the computer, now when I shot it, I shot it as a photographer. And that and that is one of those things like when I photographed my mom dying, I hid behind the camera and I and, and I guess we hide behind the camera, but now that I sit and I look at this image, and to me it's definitely a black and white image. I you know I look at it around here. I mean, this is the only air, this is the air vent. <laughs> I mean, not much of an air vent. And just think, hundreds and hundreds of people packed in here, either in sweltering heat or frigid cold, for days at a time, while people died, threw up, went to the bathroom, screamed, yelled, didn't know where they were, go were didn't know they, where they were going. So all I have to say about this is just stare at the image. Stare at the car right around here. Any of these places. And this is what I did when I edited this image and I made it black and white and it made it stand out. Is I got re I I literally cried looking at this image because I I started to feel not that I could ever feel what they went through, but I started to almost put myself in the position of seeing what was going on inside and just look at it and try to see that for yourself the faces of the people that were in there the women the children the the, the elderly the men i just being moved around like nothing uh and basically you know these tracks represented something when you got into Birkenau the you know you you basically get there your belongings would be thrown away somewhere else to be pillaged you'd get off the train and there would be an ss uh, quote-unquote doctor standing there looking at you and they would determine whether you're fit for work or you're not if you were fit for work they pointed to the left and you went into the camp you got your numbers tattooed on your arm and you basically went to work until they either worked you to death or killed you or something like along those lines. And if you went and they pointed to the right when they're standing there, which is the left side of the tracks, they walked you basically to your death down to the gas chambers that they told you were showers and then dropped Zyklon B on you inside these showers with a thousand or more people crammed in. And it took up to 15 to 20 minutes for everybody to basically die before they then came in and put you into crematorium and killed you. Now, yes, this is not a lovely discussion or, or anything to have, but you can't forget the past. Those who forget the past are deemed to repeat it. And that's why you can't hide from the bad. You have to remember it so that it doesn't get repeated again. So basically the women and children under the age of, uh, what was it, 14 or 15, basically an elderly uh, handicap. They just went straight down and were killed. So when I look at this, you just think of people not knowing where they're going. So you've just been taken from your home, thrown on a train, locked inside, n no clue where you're going. Then you finally get somewhere and you rush out only to be met by a doctor, quote unquote. I say quote unquote because doctors aren't meant to send people to their death. That's against their oath. Um, and so 
Just look at it. You know, what do you see? Can you put yourself in the situation, which n- most of us aren't able to do that, and you just, the anguish that must be involved with what happened. So those are the three images. There were others, but again, as part of a story, I'll show you something. I'll just, let me just go in here and just show you one other, and I didn't, I didn't use it. I got to find it. It's right here. Um, I didn't use it because it, well, I guess I could use it. I'll, I, I'll, I'll debate that. It's the, it's the fourth image. As part of the context of the story that I just told you, this was where they walked to. These stairs are stairs that led into the gas chamber. Now, this is a demolished gas chamber that was blown, was blown, blown up, blown up by, by the resistance that had exposed sides, and the Germans tried to hide it all before they, um, before they fled from Auschwitz. But these are stairs that led down into a gas chamber. They were told showers. But how many people walked down these to die? Hundreds of thousands of people. And so maybe this image works as the fourth image in context when you tell the story of what it means. I'll still go through and look at the other images because maybe I'll go back and the, and the story is told even more. But this is obviously not good. So those, those are the images. I mean, you can see, I'll just show you, this is the classic shot of Birkenau that you would, you would always see. Maybe I'll show more. I don't know. Those were just the three and four, four that grabbed me. Um, and plus there's people in it and, you know, whatever. That's thinking like a photographer part. But um, this, this one just grabbed me and continues to grab me no matter how many times I look at it. So I'll leave it at that. No intro, no outro, not for this video. And those are these images. Full reses are uploaded. Um, I'm going to print this image big and hang it on my wall. (laughs) Not a great image to hang on the wall, but it's one of those reminders of what could be if you don't ask questions, if you don't stand up for something, if you don't believe in, well, (laughs) don't believe in something because obviously the Nazis believed in something different. Um, but this is one of those images that I think you, that people should just stare at and just think, what's behind those doors?